Welcome, this is Speakima, and today, Thirst. Thirst is a film directed by Park Chan-wook in 2009. If you don't know who Park Chan-wook is, shame on you, because he has directed incredible films over the past two decades, including the infamous Old Boy of 2003, which is one of the three films from his Vengeance trilogy, the other two being Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance in 2002 and Lady Vengeance of 2005. And more recently, he has directed Stoker in 2013 and The Handmaiden in 2016. The plot for this film is simple. Sang Hyun, a priest working for a hospital, volunteers for a secret vaccine development project intended to eradicate a deadly virus. The virus eventually takes over the priest, but he miraculously survives through a blood transfusion procedure. The catch is that the blood he received was that of a vampire. As he recovers from the virus, he realizes his sole reason for living now is the pleasures of the flesh and blood. Before we go on, I must say that Park chan is a director I find to be widely misunderstood by the public because of Old Boy. Many have been describing his later films as being foreign, messy, and underwhelming compared to the calculative and precise presentation of Old Boy. Going as far as to say that he has lost his touch, that he's trying hard to reach the level of Old Boy again, only to fail and make things worse. Well, what I think is a little different. Not only do I think that all of his works are tied together under a few unifying themes, but I also think that Thirst is the work that is the most representative of Park chan in that it demonstrates his full spectrum of skills as a director and is the most free in its movement. It really shows that this is something Park truly enjoyed making. So in a way, Thirst is Park, not old boy. <laughs> So that's already one reason to check out this film. If you're a fan of Park and wish to experience something that is 100% him, there's no better film than Thirst. And on that note, it stars Song Kang-ho, who is a national treasure of an actor in Korea and probably a familiar face globally nowadays thanks to his recent role in Parasite. <laughs> but let's dive in a little deeper into what makes this film a classic. Firstly, the film focuses on different types of moral dilemmas like prohibition, epistemic, and world-imposed moral dilemmas to introduce its motif and to push the narrative forward. As Sang Hyun, the priest, slowly transforms into a vampire, he realizes that he may be falling in love with Teju, a wife of an old friend of his. The film dedicates most of its time exhibiting Sang Hyun's struggle to maintain his identity as a good priest while fighting his instinctual urges as a vampire. And in doing so, the film, instead of focusing on the events surrounding the characters, decides to characterize and give meaning to the reactions of the different events. In other words, the type of incidents that are shown on screen as part of the plot are less meaningful than the overarching theme of moral dilemmas. Everything that happens, happens to question the audience of the harsh nature of the dilemmas and to place them in the protagonist's shoes. And with this, the film becomes less of a ride and more of a stationary art piece, allowing us to concentrate more on the mise-en-scene of the film, letting us appreciate, digest, and dissect each scene of the film without restriction. Many interiors featuring a symmetrical arch structure to give off a religiously divine mood, the house full of old furniture primarily with brown tint for a more conservative, restricted, prison-like vibe, mixed with bits of blue here and there and especially on Teju with a strong dark blue dress to potentiate her callous and dangerous personality are only some of the film's clever attention to detail to foretell the audience of the impending bloody downfall. And just because the film is abstract in its direction, it doesn't mean that it lacks life. In fact, the opposite. It's brutally dark, cold, and bloody, yet full of action, comedy, and warmth. It's actually because the film doesn't depend on its events that it can have so many clashing ideas that might otherwise never fit together. But so oppositely, if you don't focus on the right aspect of the film, it can easily become messy and all over the place. A vampire movie done by the director of Old Boy is already a huge remix in itself, but add the clashing genres, events, dialogues, and characters, and the entire film will feel uncoordinated and clueless in its direction. It won't make sense and you won't know the place to dedicate your attention to. It will feel subpar because it will be all over the place, trying to achieve everything and failing at everything, which is what I meant when I say it's easy to misunderstand his works. 
So go in remembering that what happens does not matter more than its themes and its daring questions. And you will most definitely be able to walk out in awe at how detailed and exhaustive the film is, and at how much of a masterclass director Park chan truly is. So go now and please experience this film if you haven't. Thanks for watching.